Arnold Palmer has won 92 golf tournaments and is arguably the world's best known athlete. But he's also known for his kindness and charity to others. A hospital in Florida bears his name. He served as chairman for the March of Dimes. And earlier this month, he helped senior services deliver their five millionth meals on wheels. Palmer was in Winston-Salem recently to be honored by his alma mater, Wake Forest University, with the unveiling of a 13-foot bronze statue. Following the ceremony, and with the help of Wake Associate AD Steve Schott, I was fortunate to have had the only private interview with Mr. Palmer. Well, as a 60-year-old journalist, I'm supposed to be objective. I'm not supposed to get excited when I interview people. But uh, this man next to me has been my hero my entire life, and I'm not even a golfer, and the world is better for that. Uh, but you have been a hero to so many people, and thank you for being on the show, Arnold Palmer. Thank you. Um, and, and I am excited, so I'll try to keep my composure. Uh, earlier, just for the record, we're taping this on October 18th, the day of the unveiling of your statue. But earlier in the day, you uh, delivered the five millionth Meals on Wheels in this area, and that sort of harkens back to, I remember your, your dad, Deacon, teaching you about giving back. What, what did all that mean to you? Well, that was something. I, uh, I was really pleased to be able to do that. I, you know, I've done various things in charities. I've been a part of the Meals on Wheels before, but today was very special when you think that 500 million yeah. meals and the lady was wonderful. She was, she was just so gentle and quiet and so happy. It meant, it meant a lot to her. It means oh, a lot to all the it folks. It meant a lot to everybody. It meant a lot to me to see her as comfortable and as content as she was and, and to be able to say, and she, she, and she continually thanked everybody for being sure. there and delivering the, the meals on wheels and, and when you think. You know, it's hard to to think about five hundred. Yeah, I think million? it was five million. Five million today. Five million. Yeah, yeah. not five hundred. Well, it, well, we'll, we'll have close. you do that too. We'll do that. You'll sometime. do the five hundred billion. Yes, we will now, make you know, that. You know, one thing when I was reading about you over the years and and following you, I've never I've never heard you comment on something. Let me ask you this. We know about your father putting a golf club in your hand when I guess when you were three or four, but I've never heard you say at exactly what age or stage in your life did you know in your own gut that you were going to be a top competitor? Was it, were you cocky at 18? Did you, did you just figure it out when you won your first golf tournament? When did it hit you? You know, that's a, that's a good question because uh, my father was also tough and, and he kept me from ever becoming a cocky young kid. I mean, his, just his mannerisms, his teaching uh, held me down. And, and at the time, I thought, well, boy, you know, he's too tough on me. <laughs> but a little later on, I realized that the things that he was doing are the things that were coming out and making me do what I did. And, and after having an opportunity to look at the whole situation and being able to say, Gee, he never really got overwhelmed with what I was doing or right. how I was playing. And he rarely ever told me how good I was. He said, you just show me, and that's good enough for me. When did you think you were good? Well, uh, I kind of scheduled my life, uh, if, if you will, for... Uh, the early part, I came to Wake Forest and I played here and I knew I was able to compete with the people that I was competing with. And then I, uh, let, I was in the service for three years and I, I competed a little there and then I get back to Wake Forest and, and then I realized that there was time that I had to decide what I was going to do. Good decision, because when Ted Williams came out of the Army, everybody thought, well, he won't be able to hit again, and he hit better than ever. So. Right, and well, that's the same thing. I know you're busy, and I don't want to keep you very long. I have one other question I want to ask you. I've always wanted to ask you this. Arnie's Army. Uh, now, those of us who followed you every weekend on television felt like we were part of it. But here's the question. You know when they talk about these NFL games and the big stadiums, and they say, well, the crowd's really into this game. They're the 12th man. They're going to impact the game. Here's the question. Do you ever feel that Arnie's Army helped you play better? And conversely, do you ever feel it might have intimidated some people that you played against? 
Well, I think both are true, and I think that uh, it encouraged me uh, because I felt a responsibility to the people, as I did to my father, to perform and to perform at the top of my uh, position in life. Yeah, and do you think that any of the competitors felt a little bit intimidated by that adulation? Well, I can mean only, they might have missed a putt I, or something because I can only speculate on that <laughs> and uh, and say that uh, I hope they felt intimidated. <laughs> oh, oh, I appreciate you do. Oh, one, one last thing. In my research, it seems to me you had two famous caddies that a lot of people don't know about. You were eight or nine years old, and Lois Jean was your first caddy, your sister. Right. And when you got to be a big star, I heard that Frank Sinatra caddied for you for a couple of holes. My question is, who was the better caddy, Lois Jean or Frank Sinatra? Oh, Lois Jean. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you would have said that in front of Frank? Oh, yes. <laughs> I really do appreciate you doing this. I, the world is a better place because of you and not just because of golf. And Thank you. Thanks for everything. Thank you.